What's going on guys? Today we are experimenting with a little thing called recoil. So anytime you send something forward, like a bullet, it's gonna send an equal amount of force to the rear. And that is where recoil comes from. So generally speaking, the bigger or heavier the bullet, the more recoil it's gonna have. Now obviously there are variables like how the cartridge is loaded, how heavy the gun is, etc. Now we've all seen videos on the internet of people shooting guns they probably have no business shooting, which usually results in laughter but most likely an injury for them so today we are going to work our way up from the 22 lr all the way to the 50 bmg this is you and this is the guy she told you not to worry about so we're going to shoot a bunch of different guns and see if i can give you all an idea of how much recoil they have and how much recoil is too much recoil and this is what our table looks like we have tons of pew pews from the 22 all the way up to the 50 BMG. Now I realize a lot of you guys have probably shot most of these guns yourself, but this video could also be for the new gun owner that's just getting into this stuff and wants to know what the recoil's like on all these different guns. One thing I wanna emphasize is if you're ever giving someone a gun to shoot for the very first time, always load just one round. It could save their life. So what happens, especially with these monster guns like the 500 Magnum, I see it all the time, is they'll shoot the first shot and as the gun starts to recoil, it kind of comes back like this. Now I'm not gonna point a 500 Magnum at my face, but you can see where this is going. And under the recoil, the trigger will reset and they'll accidentally press that trigger again. And if the gun is pointed at your face, that's not good. And we're gonna start with the 22 long rifle. This is the Ruger 1022. You can see the tremendous amount of recoil this thing has, just a real shoulder bruiser. No, obviously 22s literally have no recoil. Besides a BB gun, it's probably the softest shooting gun there is. The perfect caliber to get people started on, you know, get used to the safety rules and then work your way up. I think everyone should have a 22. Now we're moving on to some cooler stuff. Next up we have the nine millimeter PCC and this is the HK SP5. You gotta do the HK slap when you have an HK. Very nice. So there's obviously several guns you could put in between the 22 and the nine millimeter carbine, but these are very controllable, very soft shooting, not too loud, and pretty much anyone besides a small child maybe could shoot these with no problem, especially when they're as nice as an HK. Now this might surprise a lot of you guys, but I'm gonna put the AR-15 right behind the nine millimeter sub gun, even before some of the pistols. Remember this video is about recoil and the AR-15 has very little recoil. Extremely loud. <laughs> God. Well, now that we've scared all the neighbors poop out, as you can see, very low recoil. They are kind of loud and intimidating, especially for new shooters, but I would say this actually has even less recoil than the nine millimeter carbine. It just has more blast and concussion. And a lot of people that don't shoot think the AR-15 looks super duper scary, but they have almost no recoil. And there's a reason this is the most popular rifle in the country. Next up, we have our first handgun. So this is the Glock 19. It shoots the nine millimeter and obviously with handguns you have fewer points of contact so the recoil is a little bit tougher to manage I love the nine millimeter I think my ear pro's falling out because that was loud as hell so the nine millimeter is probably the most common handgun caliber it's kind of the perfect balance of low recoil and still being an effective self-defense caliber it's also my personal favorite Next up, we have the 45 ACP, and we're shooting this one out of the Smith & Wesson MMP shield. One thing to keep in mind with handguns is the size of the pistol really determines the amount of recoil. So the smaller guns are obviously going to kick a little bit harder. It's kind of a different recoil impulse too. The 9mm and 40 Smith & Wesson are a little snappier, whereas the 45 feels like more of a slow push. But no doubt about it, the 45 definitely has more recoil. But if you ask a 1911 guy, it only takes 145. Next up, we have the 7.62x39 AK-47. Obviously the arch nemesis to the AR-15 and a little more powerful.
I love the AK. <laughs> I feel like I say that about every one of these guns. Moving right along, next up we have the 12 gauge shotgun. So this is the Winchester 1897 trench gun and it's probably my favorite shotgun I've ever owned. So it's kind of hard to say how much recoil a 12 gauge has because there's so many different kinds of ammo and some are a lot more powerful than others. So we have birdshot in here. Let's see how much recoil it has. I forgot to mention, this is a slam fire shotgun. So birdshot is definitely on the low end of the power spectrum, but as you can see, it still has a little bit of kick to it. And I'm sure most of you guys have shot a 12 gauge shotgun before. They don't have a ton of recoil, but they are powerful enough to hurt you if you don't know what you're doing. Next step. 44 Magnum. When most people think of the 44 Magnum, they think of revolvers and Clint Eastwood, Dirty Harry, stuff like that. But this is the Rossi Ranch Hand 44 Magnum lever gun. And I think this is a little bit cooler, so. Let's see how much recoil it has. <laughs> oh yeah. I accidentally hit a steel plate. That's a pretty big step up. So the 44 Magnum is where a lot of people start to check out and no longer enjoy the recoil, especially with lightweight revolvers and stuff like that. This isn't quite as bad, but it still has a lot of recoil. The 44 Magnum is very powerful. I just realized I almost forgot one and it's kind of important. So this is the AR-10. It shoots the 308 or the 762 by 51 and I believe this was the original AR design and then the 556 AR15 came a little bit later. So, very common gun. Uh, shout out to BFF Firearms in Danville, Illinois. This one belongs to them and they loaned it to me to make videos. So, let's see what the recoil feels like. Charging handle almost punched me in the face. <laughs> so this is a Palmetto State Armory AR-10. There's a million different brands out there and some of them are softer shooting than others, but overall I would say it does not have too much recoil, maybe equal to or a little bit more than an AK-47. So very controllable. Now we're getting into the stuff that you're all probably here to see. This is my favorite lever gun I've ever owned, the Henry Lever Action 4570. So the 4570 is kind of a big game caliber. I mean, not to the level of an elephant gun, but it can take bear, buffalo, stuff like that. So it's gonna have a lot of recoil. I've got one low power load and one full power load so you guys can see the difference. Not bad. Kind of bad. <laughs> so that second one definitely had quite a bit of recoil, and I would say this is where we start getting into the territory of experienced shooters only. The 4570 is pretty serious. And now we're getting into the ones that are just flat out painful to shoot. So this is our first big game rifle or elephant rifle. It is the 375 H&H Magnum, and look at the size of that cartridge. So recoil is obviously subjective depending on your size, weight, strength, experience, you know, a lot of different things. I'm about 5'10", 165 pounds, although my Tinder profile says 6'4", 250. I'm not. We're all going to handle these calibers differently, but as a pretty average size guy, this is what the 375 H&H Magnum looks like. <laughs> a little more recoil than I remember. And remember, this is on the low end of the power spectrum when it comes to big game rifles, but I would say even this has about twice the recoil of the 4570.
Now, it wouldn't be a proper recoil video if we didn't shoot the 500 Magnum as much as I don't want to. So this could easily be at the very top of the list in terms of hardest recoiling guns I have because it's a handgun. And it's kind of hard to compare recoil between rifles and handguns. They're just completely different. But I would say this is definitely not for inexperienced shooters. These things are an absolute handful. I'm all out of 700 grain T-Rex bullets, unfortunately, so we're gonna shoot a 440 grain lead solid gas check. And really, no matter what 500 Magnum ammo you shoot, they all are pretty painful. So let's get this over with. and the camera does not do it justice. Now, I've heard people say that the 460 Smith & Wesson actually has more recoil than the 500 Magnum. I don't know if they're comparing that to the 700 grain 500 Magnum because I can't really comprehend how anything could have more recoil than that. But either way, this is definitely the most powerful handgun I have. It's an absolute beast. All right, guys, here we go. So I'm shooting this before the 50 BMG just because the 50 Cal is kind of in a league of its own, but there's no doubt about it. This is the hardest recoiling gun that I have by far. So this is the Thompson Center Pro Hunter 500 Nitro Express. And you can see the monstrosity that this thing shoots. So the 375 we shot was a 300 grain bullet and this is a 575 grain bullet. So almost twice the size. Go ahead and put our bullet in the chamber. Up to this point, I would say none of the guns we've shot have too much recoil for me to handle physically. Let's see what this one does. It sucks. <laughs> You never get used to that. <laughs> I feel like I just got a concussion. <laughs> so this is what viral Instagram reels are made of, and we've all seen videos of guys shooting big boar elephant guns and stuff like this, and just losing the gun, falling on the ground, flying into the wall. The amount of force that these calibers generate is almost hard to put into words. You really have to hang on to it and you really have to know what you're doing because it'll hurt you if you don't. All right, we have arrived at our final gun to shoot, which of course is the 50 BMG. So these do not have as much recoil as some of the elephant guns we shot, mainly because the rifle weighs about 50 pounds. But the concussion, the blast, and just the sheer power of the 50 cal is unlike anything else, which is why I did put it at the end of the video. I'm gonna shoot this one off the shoulder so you guys can see how much recoil it has, but truthfully, it's not meant to be shoulder fired out of this particular gun. This is what an anti-material round looks like. <laughs> Surprised I didn't lose my hat. The blast from this thing literally flipped my camera screen back about 90 degrees. So that is how much force and concussion is coming out of that giant muzzle brake. To be honest, I wanna trade my 50 cal in and get something like a Barrett M107 or a semi-auto 50 that's a lot lighter weight and easier to fire from the shoulder because this one clearly is not meant to be shot that way. But I love the 50, uh, the blast, concussion, force, energy. There's just nothing like shooting the 50 BMG, which is why I put it at the end of the video. But as you saw, the recoil really isn't that bad because the gun weighs 87 pounds. All right, guys, that is all I got for you today. I hope you enjoyed or at least maybe learned something from our little recoil demonstration today. I would say the order that I went in is pretty accurate in terms of how these guns recoil. I might swap the AR and the nine millimeter carbine because I actually think the AR does have less recoil. At the end of the day, recoil is all subjective. It depends on your size, weight, strength, experience, etc. And I like to think I could handle just about any gun, but deep down I know there are a couple calibers that I would get absolutely bodied by if I tried to shoot. That's about it. I hope y'all enjoyed this and it gave you some info on how recoil actually works and why certain calibers don't 
belong in the hands of beginners. Remember, you do not get a second chance if you make a mistake with a firearm. Again, hope you all enjoyed it. Let me know in the comments what the biggest gun you've ever shot is and whether or not you enjoyed it. Those should be some really funny stories because I know a lot of people don't like shooting powerful guns and dealing with recoil like that. There's only a few of us that are crazy enough to enjoy it. If you did like the video, let me know in the comments below. As always, hit that like button for me, guys. I'd really appreciate it. Thank you all for watching, and I'll see you next time.